Arizona isn't just a popular global tourist destination. Plenty of Americans, from entrepreneurs to baby boomers, to those escaping harsh New England winters, are calling the Grand Canyon State their home. More than 2 million people have made the move to Arizona since 2010, making it the nation's third top destination state. If you love the heat, there are more than 300 sunny days a year. Stunning desert scenery, laid-back living, lower costs. Arizona could be just the thing for you. Originally part of New Mexico, Arizona experienced its own version of the gold rush when copper was discovered in 1854. For more than 100 years, copper mining was the state's largest industry. To signify that Arizona was America's largest copper producer, the state placed a large copper star in the center of its flag. To drive the point home even more, it covered the state's Capitol Dome in copper in 1975. Arizona was brought into the Union on Valentine's Day, 1912. It was the last state to be admitted to the continental United States. But given the climate, the population never fully boomed until refrigeration and air conditioning became widely used in the 50s and 60s. Located in the Southwest, Arizona is bordered by California, Nevada, New Mexico, Utah, and Mexico. Shifts in the Earth's crusts and rivers, especially the Colorado, have done the most to create the state's spectacular and diverse landscape. Arizona is divided into two major regions, the Colorado Plateau and the Basin and Range. The Colorado Plateau stretches across the famous Four Corners region, where Arizona, Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico meet. There's even a monument there commemorating it. Northern Arizona's contribution to the Colorado Plateau is semi-arid, mostly flatlying, and ranges from 5,000 to 8,000 feet in elevation. This is where you'll find the largest stand of evergreen ponderosa pine trees in the world. You'll also find the famous Red Rocks of Sedona and the Grand Canyon, widely considered one of the seven wonders of the world. Or how about Antelope Canyon? Named for the pronghorn antelope that used to live in the canyon, the red-colored, swirling sandstone walls are any photographer's dream. Here's the Painted Desert. This rocky, badland landscape was created by millions of years of volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, wind erosion, and floods. More than 93,000 acres, you'll find a natural canvas of pastel-colored rock formations. Next door to the Painted Desert is the Petrified Forest. This is the remains of a once lush forest destroyed by lava more than 200 million years ago. Thanks to millions of years of wind erosion, the tree logs, made mostly of quartz, can now be seen. While hiking, backpacking, or horse riding through the park, you can explore Puerco Pueblo, an 800-year-old, 100-room dwelling, and the source of an extensive collection of prehistoric pottery. Canyon de Chelly National Monument is one of the longest continuously inhabited landscapes in North America. A Navajo community still lives on the canyon floor, where they herd sheep during the summer months. Besides its beauty, the canyon is known for its steep walls that cradle hundreds of ancient Pueblo ruins built between 350 and 1300 AD. Meteor Crater is just outside of Winslow, Arizona, where you'll find the best preserved meteorite impact site on the planet. Measuring 570 feet deep and 4,100 feet across, it's estimated that a 130-foot-wide, 300,000-ton asteroid hit the Earth with a force of 20 million tons of TNT. And no description of the wondrous geography of Arizona would be complete without mentioning the Grand Canyon. Vast, magnificent, and absolutely beautiful. It's Arizona's most famous landmark and something you must see at least once in your lifetime. The Colorado River snakes a swift course along the bottom, and the canyon stretches more than 277 miles from end to end. Its rocky walls, dipped in hues of gold, pinks, oranges, and purples, descend more than a mile to the canyon's floor. That's one advantage of living in Arizona. You'll have plenty of time to explore the full canyon on foot, by mule, or riding the rapids of the Colorado River. There are literally tons of sightseeing opportunities in Arizona. Visit Saguaro National Park, home of 200-year-old cactuses growing as high as 50 feet. The Chiricahua National Monument is filled with towering volcanic rock spires, caves, and old lava flows. Go stargazing in Arizona's Sky Village, a town built specifically to enjoy the night sky. Watch the sun rise or set over the Sonoran Desert from a hot air balloon. Visit Oregon Pipes Cactus National Monument, the only place in the world with these 150-year-old cacti that flower only at night. In the Quinlan Mountains, you'll find the Kitt Peak National Observatory on Kitt Peak. Biosphere 2 is the largest closed ecological system ever created. I've been there. It's simply astounding. Last but not least, mosey on down to Tombstone, world famous for the showdown at the OK Corral. Beyond sightseeing, there are plenty of activities available in Arizona. 
And no, I'm not just talking about golfing, hiking, biking, and camping, though you can definitely do all those things in Arizona. At Lynx Lake near Prescott, you can rent kayaks for the day. In Sedona, you can go off-roading. If you're into self-defense, you can train at Arizona's famous Gunsight Academy. Or why not go on a helicopter tour? Or jump out of a perfectly good airplane over the Grand Canyon. The sky is literally the limit. In addition to the amazing geography, Arizona is home to some pretty incredible weather. Due to the huge range and elevation, climate here swings from tolerable to hot to really hot to are you kidding me? From a low of 70 feet above sea level to Humphreys Peak at 12,633 feet, the state is a mix of arid and semi-arid subtropical climates that receive very little precipitation during the year. Despite all this, you might be surprised to find Arizona does get snow. In fact, it can and has snowed in every part of the state at one time or another. Flagstaff, the largest city in northern Arizona, can easily get up to 10 feet of snow. And the Park Service regularly shuts down portions of the Grand Canyon because of too much snow. Prescott, located just 55 miles west-northwest of the geographic center of Arizona, can get 12 to 24 inches. Then there's Tucson, 70 miles from the Mexican border. The city's last snowfall was two inches in 2013. As for Phoenix, the Valley of the Sun, you can expect the occasional light dusting. That said, don't get your hopes up. The National Weather Service only records seven times where snow was measurable there, the highest of which being half an inch in 1939. All right, that's a lot about snow in a state that's not known for it. But what about the heat? Though in Flagstaff, the summer temperatures reach a high of 81 degrees and lows in the 50s, it's a much different story from most of the rest of the state. Come late spring, the daytime temperature moves into the triple digits, and it pretty much stays there into the fall. In Phoenix, the summer temperatures begin hitting 100 in May. From June into August, you can expect highs ranging from 100 to 115, and yes, it can get hotter. Phoenix set a record in June 1990, topping out at 122 degrees. Four years later, Lake Havasu City hit 128 degrees, the second hottest day in U.S. history, beaten only by Death Valley, which hit 134 degrees in 1913. Despite the scorching temperatures, the heat in Arizona can be described as a dry heat which has certain advantages not found in humid states like Florida or Southern Texas. You see, when you're hot, the body's cooling system kicks in and you begin to sweat. If the weather is hot and dry, the water on your skin turns to vapor, wicking away the heat and cooling you down. If it's humid, you'll feel like you're sweating a lot, but it doesn't evaporate. This leaves you feeling hot, sticky, and wet, and you can't cool down. Visitors to Arizona during the summer months will need about two weeks to acclimate to the heat. Your body will do this by increasing blood flow to the skin, increasing your blood plasma volume, and activating more sweat glands. But even acclimated people aren't immune to the dangers of Arizona heat. The number one cause of weather-related deaths here is heat exhaustion. In 2018, it was responsible for nearly 400 deaths alone. During the hottest months, Arizonans are encouraged to drink plenty of water, stop outdoor chores around 9 a.m., and always carry a charged cell phone. They should carry an emergency supply of water in their car at all times in case they get stuck. And by the way, as bad as the heat is for us, your car will also suffer. The interior can quickly rise to 150 degrees. Plan on investing in seat covers and a sunscreen for your dash. And expect to replace your car battery every two years. The other thing about summers in Arizona is the monsoon season. Starting in June and continuing through September, nearly half of the yearly rainfall happens during these seasonal storms. Expect torrential downpours insane lightning displays, destructive hail, and massive dust storms. During one 2016 Phoenix storm, the National Weather Service recorded more than 15,000 lightning flashes. One to two inches of rain in an hour may sound like nothing where you live, but in the dry southwest, and especially Arizona, it can be deadly. In as little as 15 minutes, a dry wash can easily become a raging torrent. Flash floods kill more than 80 Arizonans a year. Oh, and by the way, Arizona has microbursts. That's when a large thunderstorm collapses, creating a destructive downpour of rain and wind toward the ground. In 1996, one such microburst resulted in 115 miles an hour gusts at Deer Valley Airport in northwest Phoenix. The downward pressure of a microburst can pick up loose sand and dirt from the ground, creating a wall of dust and large debris several miles long, towering 10,000 feet high. Arizona is the sixth largest state, and it has the most land reserved for our Native American tribes. These great people are a big part of the state's culture. All around Arizona, tribes host or participate in special festivals, sacred ceremonies, and powwows. This gives non-members a chance to learn about each tribe's traditions through songs, dances, stories, and the way they dress. 
If you go, you'll delight at the stunning arts and crafts each tribe has to offer. Enjoy the Kachina dolls of the Hopi, Zuni jewelry, weaved baskets of the Papago and Tahona Odom, and of course, the famous Navajo rugs. The fusion of Native American, Spanish, and Mexican culture is also evident in the types of homes you'll find, such as Pueblo-style homes, American Western Ranch, Colonial Spanish, and Spanish Mission. If you love Mexican, Southwestern, Tex-Mex dishes, that's another reason you'll love living in Arizona. Additionally, you'll find specific foods that are unique to the state. The Sonoran hot dog is a bacon-wrapped dog in a bread pocket with mayo, mustard, beans, onions, and tomato. Mesquite flour is ground fresh from mesquite pods. It's high in protein and gluten-free. Chiltepin peppers grow wild in Arizona and will make any dish flaming hot. Navajo tacos, also known as fry bread, are delicious, savory, and can have a crunchy texture. Prickly pear cacti is used in margaritas, syrup, candies, and jellies. And ah, chimichangas. Legend has it this deep fried burrito was created by accident in Arizona. Kind of like how that peanut butter and chocolate accident in space created the Reese's Cup. And the rest, as they say, is history. Though the food alone might tempt some to move to the Grand Canyon State, others will go for the amazing job market. Right now, the economy is enjoying a boom in new businesses, relocating businesses, job growth, and rising wages. It's estimated that by the end of 2019, Arizona had the third fastest growing economy in the nation. Currently, about 74% of that growth is concentrated in the services sector, specifically education and health services, leisure and hospitality, business services, and utilities. On the non-services side, several emerging industries are expected to drive fast job growth over the next few years. Aerospace and defense contractors are building plants to manufacture and test their designs. Over 1,200 industry manufacturers are here, and they're responsible for more than 54,000 jobs. Semiconductors, artificial intelligence, self-driving vehicles, 3D printing, education technology, electronics, software, and IT sectors employ 132,000 people. Given Arizona's pro-business environment, more firms are moving in, expanding, or starting up. Forbes magazine predicts that Arizona's tech industry will have the fastest job growth in the nation. Some of the major technology centers new or coming to Arizona include the General Motors Innovation Center, Intel's $300 million R&D Center, and GoDaddy's Global Tech Center. Arizona's bioscience industry has grown by more than 15% since 2016. That's double the national growth, and it employs 30,000 people. With the rise of high-tech industries, Arizona's oldest industry, mining, has become even more vital. Electric cars, charging stations, consumer electronics, renewable energy technology, they all have one thing in common, and that is copper. Arizona produces 70% of the nation's copper, and more mines are coming online every day to meet the global demand. The state also has gold, silver, molybdenum, lead, turquoise, gypsum, manganese, uranium, tungsten. Together, these mines employ 40,000 people with high-paying jobs, and their wages are double the state's average. Speaking of wages, the average median income in Arizona was more than $59,000 in 2018. While that's slightly below the national average, it is a 4.7% increase over 2017. Having a job in Arizona means you'll spend 25 minutes each way going to work, on average, ranking it 30th in the country, best to worst. The Phoenix metro area has the fastest commute of the 25 top metropolitan areas in the nation, coming in at 25 minutes. The shortest commute within the Phoenix metro area belongs to Tempe, at 20.9 minutes. Tucson residents have the second shortest commute in the state, at 21.7 minutes. But what about cost of living? Overall, Arizona is a pretty affordable place to live. Despite the population growth in the state and around the major metro areas, median home values haven't exploded yet. In fact, home values just recovered from the Great Recession and are now at their 2006 highs. In 2018, Arizona's median home value is around $241,000. For the state's two largest cities, the median home value is even lower. If you want a home in the cooler mountains or in an upscale area, you can try Flagstaff or Scottsdale, but prices jump significantly. If you can't decide where you want to buy, renting is actually a very affordable option. Rental prices are lower in Tucson than in the city of Phoenix, and highest in Flagstaff. In the suburbs, as with any city, rental prices rise significantly. When it comes to utilities, Arizona has the six highest electric bills with a monthly average of $128. Keep in mind this is an annual average, 
In the summer, your electric bill can grow significantly higher, when having AC can be a matter of life and death. Residents of Arizona spend less on food, or about 11% of their income. The national average is 12.6%. In terms of dollars, this comes to $3,938 on groceries a year, and another $2,918 eating out. In May of 2019, a gallon of milk in Phoenix went for $2.06, more than a dollar less than the national average. And a dozen eggs went for $2.10, saving you 16 cents over the national average. Not everything in Arizona is lower though. Arizona has the seventh highest gas prices in the country. In May 2019, the average price per gallon was $3.15, well above the national average of $2.92. Taxes in Arizona is a bit of a mixed bag. The state has an income tax and it ranges from 2.94% to 4.54%, depending on your bracket. This is lower than most other states. The property tax rate is a bright spot, with an effective rate of 0.77%, which is lower than the national average of 1.14%. The sales tax in Arizona is admittedly high. In fact, it has the 11th highest sales tax in the nation. While the state has a base rate of 5.6%, counties and cities are allowed to add their own taxes on top of that. Rates range from 7.6% to 11.2%. While the cost of living in Arizona is affordable, it does have a high level of poverty. According to recent U.S. Census data, the state's poverty rate was 14% by the end of 2018. However, that was a significant drop from the 18% reported in 2017. For the five largest cities in Arizona, poverty rates were significantly higher than the state average and were also significantly higher than the national average of 11.8%. Wherever you have high poverty, crime becomes an issue. According to SafeWise.com's 2020 survey, both crime rates and residents' fears of crime were dropping. Statewise, violent crime and property crime rates were lower compared to 2019. Violent crime dropped 5.1 crimes per 1,000 residents to 4.7. Property crime saw an even larger drop, from 29.1 incidents per 1,000 residents to 26.8. Nevertheless, Arizona's crime rates are still higher than the national average. But again, things are improving, or at least people's perceptions are. In 2019, 47% of survey respondents worried about crime every day. In 2020, that dropped to 40%. You'll find the top colleges and universities in the Phoenix and Tucson metropolitan areas. Arizona State University's main campus is located in Tempe, one of Phoenix's satellite cities. In Tucson, you'll find ASU's rival, the University of Arizona. Smaller than ASU in size and undergraduate population, its in-state tuition is slightly higher than ASU's. ASU and U of A tied at 117th place for U.S. News' best colleges in the nation. When it comes to the quality of K-12, it depends on who you ask. In U.S. News' annual list of the top 100 high schools in the nation, Arizona had 10 that were in the top 100. Looking specifically at charter schools, Arizona had 6 that were in the top 10. The number one charter school in Arizona, Basis Chandler, beat out Basis Scottsdale, which is ranked number 3 nationally. U.S. News ranked Arizona's K-12 33rd in the nation overall, best to worst. But HubWallet.com, a financial site, did a similar ranking of the state. It listed Arizona as having the third worst schools in the country. Their survey looked at two broad categories, quality and safety. On quality, Arizona ranked 50th. Yet they used the same data as U.S. News, which, as I said, ranked Arizona 33rd in the nation. So who was right? Well, schools, like everything else these days, are a hot political issue. Unfortunately, it's hard to determine how much weight the so-called experts place on which category, or if someone's thumb had been placed on a scale. Niche.com not only takes into account the same academic data that the other two surveys used, but it evaluates the schools in areas of teacher quality, teacher-to-student ratio, food, sports, clubs, and activities. The scores also take into account the testimonies of students and parents. Of the top 20 school districts, 10 were in the Phoenix metropolitan area and 4 were in the Tucson metro area. Only one school district in the state received an A+, and that was Catalina Foothills Unified School District in the Tucson area. Here, 69% of the students were proficient in math and 70% in reading. 18 school districts in Arizona received grades in the A range, 78 were in the B range, 71 in the C range, and 10 were in the D range. So I hope you enjoyed this admittedly short overview of the great state of Arizona. I myself have been here countless times over the years and I've always loved it. The architecture, in my opinion, is beautiful, and I absolutely love the desert environment. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and share with your friends. And until next time, I'll see you.